surprise, surprise live. I am, uh, I'm actually just going live so that I could chat with just two more members. Hi, um, our uh, cast. Aw, thank you. And I'm going to try to see if I could bring one of them on right away. And then maybe you guys can um, pop some of your questions in the below section and, and I can pass them on to, to him. There we go. We'll see if he, we we'll see if he answers. Hi guys. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Finally, right? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. I changed earphones so that hopefully this will be better. Uh, mine would have been just that. I've I've had to start and delete and start and delete like three different Instagram accounts. So. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at this. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I mean, we launched, you know, so it's out there. I just spent like the morning since three o'clock this morning doing interviews. I'm like, a lot. which is, I mean, it's a gift. It's a blessing and stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm also kind of like, I can't wait to tuck in and go to bed, but, but I'm happy to talk to you finally. Yay. <laughs> so is that there, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can we go? I was not yeah in the background anyway far away how are you happy yeah I think, happy. I think they're happy i think so i think they're responding to it and i think they're responding to i think they're responding to cal i think they're responding to the trajectory that that uh that combo make but um i just like we didn't get a chance to talk last time all the other actors were talking a little bit of course about their quarantine and blah blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um but and besides that, just sharing a little bit about themselves, which I thought was really beautiful because the audience got to know, if they don't know them already, they got to know a little bit more about them. And uh, yeah. can, if you don't mind, can I like grill you on a couple of points? Yeah? Yeah, 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 easy. Okay, okay, good. Um, so, okay, second season, you come into a show <laughs> and you've already done this before. I know. What... What was it like to come in on this show in the second season? Like, what were some of the things that you were mindful of as an actor, as a collaborator, as just a storyteller in your own right, right? Like, that's something that I think the audience might not know, but Oded, who was our, our executive producer and our first director for the first season and also our director for a major chunk of the second season... Mm -hmm in so many ways, a part of the creative initiation of this show, loved you, absolutely loved you. He felt like you are a future director, you're a future writer and storyteller, and he felt like he had a collaborator with him on set when you came on set, um, because you are you have that scope of seeing, where do I fit in? How can I assist? Um, and so on. And so what was it like for you on your end coming into a show that already had a little bit of, you know, leg underneath. Uh, it was nerve-wracking, a little, you know, because you want to find your place, but you want to do it the right way. And I, I mean, I did my audition for this in, I was in South Africa working. Yeah. Then to tape off, and then I happened to be back here in LA, and I got told off, can you come in and meet Stana at Sony? So I went in and did the audition with you. Yeah. Which I felt like it went really well, and, and then... I was lucky enough to be told, okay, you're going to hop on a plane and head to Bulgaria to film this this incredible show. So, you know, I, I binge watched everything and watched the whole show. And yeah. I was amazed when I landed in Bulgaria and Odette told me that you guys shot all 10 at the same time. That's nuts. Yes, it is nuts. I, just, that's, I, I still can't get my head around that. Yeah. And like, um, the most I've ever shot might be four at once. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then it was just about trying to find the right balance. You know, I think the show has a very, a, a really strong voice. And that voice at the time was obviously yours and Oded's. And Oded was getting ready to go on to his next project. And um, we were very lucky to obviously bring on Kasha and bring on um, new creatives. And I, I knew from early on, you know, that, Cal, it's a slow bleed. Like, we were going to introduce Cal kind of slowly. So 
just to find the rhythm of the show. And the show definitely has its own style and it has its own style which um, transcends just the page. You know, I think you advocate for everybody to have a strong voice, but you also work incredibly hard. That's what a lot of people, um, if they're watching this, they might not know that, um, you know, Steiner works till probably two in the morning every night, <laughs> collaborating and talking to LA and talking to all people in Bulgaria just to make sure that everything's, you know, up to speed for the next day because she's got definitely the executive producer hat on as well as actor. And um, I don't know, I just felt like one of those things of really just being aware of what everybody was was going through and, and you know, there was a lot of interesting character developments going through last season and then I was particularly blown away um, when I got to watch the show. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because from an actor's point of view, often you, you do read things subjectively and you do look at them from, from your prism and and because you need to, you need to focus on what your part of the big circus is. And then when I got to watch the show and see the incredible work that someone like Angel was doing with you, it completely changed the way that I saw the journey of Cal, you know, because, I mean, Cal was introduced into this show as a bit of a partner for Emily and then there was the potential for something to happen there or not and and on the page it was kind of there remember and then I you know obviously Tommy the character goes through so much and so much with Emily and then with his passing it just felt when you and I both got on set it felt completely unnatural to just move Emily so far in one direction yeah and I remember looking on the page I was like why not like it's just you know it's <laughs> It's Emily and Cal. And then um, when I got to see the show, yeah. and I got to see the amazing work that you and Angel were doing. It made complete sense to be as truthful to that story and, and yours, you know. Um, and and then just to, to go headlong into Moldova when we jumped in, that's when I felt like, you know, I found my voice and we found it's that. Fun. We so found fun. So fun. No, no, and that's the thing. You want the chemistry to develop and, you, you know, you don't want to force anything. And yeah. as an actor, you want to be as much a listener as you do with anything. So, you know, and then we were lucky enough to, um, you know, to keep delving into these two characters all the way through this season. You know, there's, and there's some great scenes. I, I was, I got to watch the show over the weekend. and Yeah, right on. Woo -woo. Yeah, there's, there's scenes that really surprised me. And, you know, there are ones that I think, oh, that... That, that I was really looking forward to seeing that scene, and it was okay. And then others I just thought were, oh yeah, just that day was that day. And then I was surprised at how great they were. So yeah, or you know how organic they felt or whatever. But um, no, I, I uh, I've joined a few shows and and in second season, and then uh, and but you know this one's definitely different because it challenges you and in a way creatively to be a little bit more bold and, and a little bit braver and and. As, present and vulnerable as you can be it's, it's interesting because I, I was chatting with someone who said that we don't necessarily spoon feed the audience in this show and I thought that that was something that was very much the case with your character as well um, we're not signaling or telling the audience how to feel about your character in, yeah. in fact we're we're holding back on it all throughout the introduction of the character and then moving forward and it's very, it's very purposeful, and even yeah. this season, um, when you know Kasha would choose camera angles and would choose when to pull focus to you, um, these moments in between, where sometimes, and even last season, Odette as well would use you as sort of a pivot point for observation on scenes, and it was really carefully done to maintain, sustain some of the mystery about Cal because. The audience doesn't necessarily need, I think, when, when you're joining in on a story like Absentia, for, for me, one of the most critical lines of this season um, is at the very end where the character says sometimes it's about valuing human life. And I thought that that in some ways encapsulates, for me, right, from this perspective, granted it's my perspective, but it encapsulates the journey of nearly all three seasons um, for all of the characters, right? And I think that 
we don't need in some ways to be didactic about it. We can let audience members fill in the blank in many spots. And one of the places that we were allowed to do that was with the development of your character, his intentions, his, um, there's so much, you know, and, and I don't know, maybe you wanted to chat a little bit about that as well. Cause that was something that we, we like ached over so many things, you know, over these months there would be moments for the audience there would be moments or days that I was like Matt please just come take a look at this scene because most of us were were in the same hotel and Matt uh, Matt would journey over from his place and help rehearse things or run things or look at script stuff for dialogue with whomever to with whomever right whether everyone the entire team because that's kind of the culture that we had it was a collaborative culture to try to see what can we do to elevate deep and call back everything, you know? So I, this is about you. I'm blabbing a lot, but maybe you can talk a bit. <laughs> no, I think, I think you, you're given an opportunity when you introduce another character into the show to have a different perspective and, and also someone that can watch Emily from, from afar, which, you know, most much of the show is from your point of view that, when we flip that in a scene and we see you going through something, it's it's a powerful tool for a director to be able to use. Um, but no, we we definitely wanted to hold back on on um, Cal and and his ambiguity through uh, both seasons, all the way up until the end, really. And I think there's there's drama in that, there's opportunity in that, in storytelling. Um, you know, if you do if you do like in a romantic comedy, when they get together, it's, it, the, the film's over. So, yeah. And with this, there was always, you know, that you wanted to have that danger and, and you wanted to have that ability to pull these characters apart and then smash them back together and pull them apart again. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I think we're very lucky in that sense where we, we were able to all work together and collaborate. And we were very lucky to have such support from Sony and from the writers and to allow us to indulge in that. And then on set, it's just about trying to be as, have as much chemistry and, you know, creativity as possible. And, and it, it seems to work, I think, for, you know, looking at some of the questions down here. And yeah. Yeah. People, people want to talk about episode six. <laughs> tell me, tell me a bit about Cal. Tell me a bit about... Mm-hmm. That was like, we, look, we hinted at some major points about Cal in um, season two. And again, not spoon feeding anything, just, you know, between the conversations that you had, your character had with Holt, mm-hmm. a lot of it was platformed there. Um, what did you, did you speak to people? You know, people, you're so engaged in the world. You've traveled all throughout um, Western Af- or sorry, Eastern Africa. Mm-hmm. And um, and contributed in many ways, um, even in Australia and so forth. So I know that you're engaged with a lot of what's happening out on the planet in a way that would make you aware of some of the things that Cal may have been exposed to. So maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the inspiration and some of the things that you drew from while knowing that this isn't the entirety yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the experiences that I had was working a lot in Tanzania up near the Congolese border, and I got to meet a lot of people that did work on security detail and did work uh, in parts of the world and had done some things that might be um, morally in line with maybe some of the stuff that Cal had been forced to do. So in many ways, uh, I was lucky enough to you know meet the human side of someone like this rather than just seeing it for who they are and, and judging them, I was fortunate enough to meet people and realise that, you know, often really good people are asked to do really horrible things. And um, and then this year, Will introduced us to an incredible person, Jason Amorai, who flew out from DC mm-hmm. and met Patrick and I, and we spent a whole day with him. And uh, I've been able to build a friendship with him and we still talk. I just spoke to him the other day. Um, yeah. And Jason, you know, he spent a lot of time in Afghanistan and a lot of time all around the world dealing with um, in hostile situations, you know, and dealing with really complex issues. And 
And then when it came to trying to bring a little bit of that towards Cal, we were so lucky where Kasha, Oded, and you know, everyone last year kind of gave us a bit of a blank slate because much of it was about his backstory, So, which we never really tapped into. It was just little droplets along the way, you know, with holds or... Even with that audition scene that I did with you, there was a little bit of a hint, and that didn't end up in our series, in our season, right? Yeah, yeah. And then when that aired, I think Will saw an opportunity, um, and an opportunity to develop this character in a way that we put down a few foundations. And then when I was given the scripts in June, which I know you've been working on for a very long time, because you know you're obviously an EP on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was so much there. There was there was such strong foundation for for us to build a journey and a character. And then by the time we get to six and the hammer drops, and you get to know about Cal's past and some of the things that he done, and it's I mean those they're just gifts for an actor. Yeah. You know to be to be given an episode where um, you have to go through such emotional. Um, truth and backstory, and you and you get to show the reason why you have these scars. It's just such a, it's such a gift. Mm-hmm. So um, that was an incredible, you know, time on set there. And, and to be supported so much by you and by everybody else, it was just, it was just, you know, lucky. And then, and to have such a great filmmaker like Kasha shoot it, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's very rare, you know? Yeah. There's a couple of scenes that we, um, we lost in the edit. And I was just talking to one of our other actors who's like, oh, there's a scene that's not in there. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. And, and I saw a couple and I was like, that's, did that happen that way? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that, man, it's such a burden when you're in the middle of the editing process. And of course, you know, I, I'm one of the people who's participating in that thing, yeah. but I don't, I don't win the battles, you oh, know, no. it's... But you know, but you know that scene that we worked on that you and I... Yeah, yeah. ...were thrilled, you know, on the yeah. day. Right? Yeah, yeah. Having watched the show, it, it couldn't have stayed in. I know, but it's an amazing scene, right? Yeah. It's an amazing scene. So that's why there is such a long discussion about yeah. that scene, amongst others, right? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't tell you the list of scenes that I was like, oh, no, please don't lose this one, right? Um, and I was thinking of maybe asking uh, if there were any of the scenes that the Sony team felt comfortable just having as like DVD extras, because I think the audience would enjoy it. And just as a part of the process of like, you know, it adds value to character, but it's also kind of a part of the process of how much stuff goes into filming a thing. And then, and then you don't actually know what's going to land until you get into the editing room and And fit pieces. Yeah, and you have to lose it for reasons that are outside of the scene. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in saying that, you know, it was such a crazy time to shoot over there, especially that last month, that I think the work that everybody's done in post and in, in the edit has been yeah. pretty special because it flows and it races to the end. Yeah. It just it has such a nice balance between the two storylines and then they obviously converge on in at 10. But um, I... Uh, yeah, there was there was nothing that I watched and realized that it was gone that I didn't understand why it was gone. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. In seeing that, you know, some of those deleted scenes were. I mean, I'd like to see them. I know, right? I know. <laughs> I'll ask. I'll see if they'll if they'll be up for uh, for sharing that. Um, tell uh, the audience maybe a little bit about working, living abroad, living over there, working on that set maybe maybe you want to you know speak a little bit about the culture that was created i know there was this Mm -hmm. one day where i mean you were you're such a gift to a set like that just just world know this matt is a gift to any set and if you get him to work on your set it's like having another another leader a teammate and, and a leader on set and um there were moments where you acknowledged and supported and uplifted cast, crew, and so on, and you're just like, yeah, just worth your weight in gold, truly. So talk a little bit about about being abroad and being on this set in specific and maybe shout-outs and stuff like that to some people. Uh, I think, you know, when you get to work, 
on any film set, it's a really lucky opportunity, you know. And and then when you finally step on set, often it doesn't quite um, bring the, the same camaraderie and love and passion and that that you really would would wish for, you know. And then there yeah. have been times, I'm sure, in the past in my career and you know, and in, in possibly yours, where you just something doesn't there's not the the kismet doesn't quite come together. And on this one, it was different. On this one, there is so much uh, love and sweat and passion put in, and as much from the crew as any actor, that when you step on set, you feel like you're part of a team of 60 or 70 people, not just five or six cast members. And it's a real, I think, European way of making film. And I now think back on the experience that we had and, you know, our AD team, our stunt team, they're just the most committed, magical people that are all working, you know, 18 hours a day yeah. for no other reason than they just love what they do and they love who they work with. And, and the conditions aren't easy, you know. We're working, um, trying to recreate much of Boston and, other parts of the world and, and yet what is achieved is just phenomenal and no one is looking for a shortcut ever no one is ever looking for um, a pat on the back it's just this incredible mentality of the people in Bulgaria that are as much a part of the show as, as anyone else outside of probably you because you're like working harder than everyone for two years for one season but you know what I mean it's just a really special magical time and yeah. And and then you get to go away to film school, you know. Yeah. I I have a young family. I have two kids, and yeah. and it would be difficult trying to commit that much energy if I was still here, you know. Yeah. And when I'm here, I'm a full time dad, especially in quarantine. Um, yeah. <laughs> full time home school dad, but no. But over there, it's just it's like this film school for four months, and you just disappear into the stories and the characters and. And then you realise everyone is as committed as, as you are and it just elevates the experience, you know, that you just hope that it finds an audience and when it does, that they go along the journey because it's as truthful a filmmaking experience as I've ever had and I think I could ever wish for. Yeah, right on. Do you want to um, do you want to give a little shout out to Milan and uh, your sort of tag teaming with him? I think that was a fun collaboration. Uh, my, my, my stunt team over there. You. Oh, by the way, I should shout out to Frankie because when Frankie came on the screen, yeah. everyone that was in my house was like, "Who's that hot man?" <laughs> so everyone, Frankie, I don't know if you're watching, but Aww. no, we had Black Rat stunts were our stunt team, and yeah. they did an exceptional job of creating a world because there's a lot of action, obviously, this season, and creating a world that is bigger than just you know, any stunt team I've ever worked with for what little they had and. And the sequences are incredible. Like now that it's out there, we could probably talk about it. Your sequence to get out of I know, the I room know. is unbelievable. <laughs> Did you like it? Oh my god. I love that one. You so know, much. I was sitting here watching it with Michelle and, and some <laughs> friends and there was a few stunts that they were all just like <gasps> Oh my god. Like it was like really cool. <laughs> Sorry. Got excited. You know? <laughs> no, that's that shit looks great. And compared to my fight, I was like, My fight's no, no, no. no. Let's not, not get a love in now. Let's not no, I'm not, it's not a love in. It's a true thing. No, no, no. Because I was like, yeah, okay, all right. You do I'm a not spin move and then you shoot that dude behind you. It was just... That was cool, huh? That it was, was cool. super cool. I was like... <laughs> all last season, I remember thinking my fights in season two were better than yours. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and we, we always had this competition, right? You were like, now my fight's going to be better. And I was like, oh, this season. <laughs> but now that I've watched season three... <laughs> Yours are, they've, taken, they've taken it to a new level. So, <laughs> yeah. congratulations. And the stunt team are, are so amazing. Yeah. You know, and they do it all day, every day. And they're there, like, oh, just, I mean, I'm getting a little bit emotional just thinking about it. They're just so special. Those, yeah. Those men and women and yeah. how hard they work that I hope. If, I mean, who knows? But if anyone's watching this and thinking of making anything anywhere in Europe or anywhere else, get in touch with Black Red Stunts because they'll uh, they'll make you proud. 
And and the whole crew, the whole crew over there. I think that, you know, um, I think we lucked out. And I, I keep saying to people, I said, this, this group has worked on major action films mm -hmm. for decades now. And an action film is, it's not easy to do. I mean, this is something that requires technical prowess. You're talking about lighting, like Pavel, you're talking oh, well, about... Yeah, you're talking about our grip guys like Joro yeah. and the whole team. You're talking about our wonderful special effects um, friends in makeup like Ani and, and Vera and all of them. Um, and Olga from Costumes. We had an amazing crew. They gave their heart to it. And, they really you did. Know, yeah, it was they a really gift. Did. You know, and it's one of those things as an actor you, you often get on set and you know, in Australia or sometimes here, you, you can see that not everyone has that passion. Yeah. You know, it's just a job. It's a gig, right? Yeah. Um, but there's... That breaks my heart when I feel that on a set. That really bothers me. Yeah? Uh -huh. Do you do you care, yeah. like, as much or are you kind of immune to it now? No, I care. Like, I'll, I, I get upset and pick a fight. And I'll tell someone <laughs> if they're not interested, then rack off, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but, yeah... No one ever didn't bring their A game, and they just, you know, all those people, Pavel and yeah, Pavi and Tony and Eddie, yeah. Eddie was yeah. just here actually, but um, yeah. yeah. Let me let me see if there are any questions. Do you guys want to ask some questions of Matt in this uh, guys? You that yeah, we want? Okay, Australian. Yes, he is Australian. How did you know? <laughs> huh? Let's have <laughs> can you see the questions? I can see some. Okay. I don't know whether they're live or not, but refreshing, yes, yes, yes. So maybe mine are live. Oh, I'm getting a lot of yeses as well. I can fame. Are there any questions before we have to jump off? Cause I yeah. I fear that I'm boring people. No, not at all. Do you have a favorite app? Why did we Why did we choose Schoenberg in Austria? That's a Will question, isn't it? Um, Will Will Pasco is our, our uh, showrunner and the uh, sort of main creative force behind season three. Um, and I'm not sure if there is a story behind why he chose Schoenberg, but we could ask him. Do you know if there's anything behind that? No, I know. I know. You know, last year we went to Moldova, and then this year there was talk of going to different parts of the world. And, and I know that, you know, you included in that conversation, you wanted to take it somewhere new and fresh. You didn't want yeah. to rehash somewhere that maybe it had had some issues in the past. So Yeah. We, we needed somewhere that had a border. We needed somewhere that was accessible by train. Because yeah. Will, Will did want to shoot something on the train, so that always... Yeah. Somewhere you could push me off a train. That was fun. <laughs> Did we laugh together? We did. I think we yeah. laughed plenty of times. <laughs> the fight scenes hard to learn. Yeah, uh, were they? Were they? And specific funny moments behind set. I know a funny moment behind set, and I know the fight scenes were hard to learn. The fight scenes were, um, and did anyone pull any pranks on you? Well, can I talk about that in the morgue bit? Yeah, go for it, yeah. All right, so when we were shooting in... It's early on when we break into Meridian, which would have been when we get down into the lab when Cal and Emily... Wait, wait, wait. Before you say anything, before you say anything, let me say this is a major spoiler, so turn it off now if you guys don't want to hear the spoiler. Go ahead. Yeah, well, we're looking for a character in the show, and we end up down in the morgue. No. And it was early in the morning one day, and we were rehearsing the morgue scene, and there's all the bodies lying out there, or laid out there, and there was real-life people, and there were some um, uh, dummies, dummies yeah. from dummy body setup. Yeah. And Francois, our amazing stunt coordinator, uh, designer, who also plays a character in near the end of the season. Two characters. Two characters. He, um, yeah, one in the beginning, one near the end. Mm -hmm. there, there's something you guys can try and figure out. That mm -hmm. could be a cool little mm -hmm. something to try and suss out who is who. Mm -hmm. But in, during the rehearsal, all the crew got in on the fact that Stan and I had to walk in and be really quiet and suss out who these bodies. And Francois hid in one of the body bags, body yeah. bags. And just as Stan was crawling up, super quiet in the morning, 
crawling up right next to this body. He jumped out of the body bag and scared the living daylights out of her. <laughs> but I, think, I think I jumped higher. Like, ah! You, 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 you did give her, you did give her a sound. And the, the thing is, is that neither of us were aware of the fact that there was, there were 50 extra crew members in the room, mm-hmm. neither of us, and nah. they all had their cameras pointed in our direction. We were so, you know, close eyed from, from it being so early in the morning. It was great. It was good fun. Yeah. So no. yeah, we laughed, we laughed a fair bit, I think. Um, and that's it. That's what happens. You know, I say making thrillers is comedy and, and there are plenty of moments, right? Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, you got to laugh. I mean, you're working so long and so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. No, we didn't film in Berlin. No, we filmed all of it in Sofia. Yeah. Area. But once the show goes to Europe, it's a lot easier to be able to recreate the certain, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can shoot outside. Yeah. How about talk a little bit about meeting with uh, Mubin? I think that's an interesting story point as well. Yeah, you know, Greg. Where Cal goes off on that. I really, I really thought Greg did a great job in this. Actually, um, mm-hmm. I, I want to reach out to him. I, I said to Will the other day that I was, I thought he was really, really special. Um, no, so we want to bring obviously part of Cal's backstory into this season to create a little bit of um, drama and. And Will, I know, had worked with Greg in the past. So um, that was, we shot that really in like, what was it, a day or two days? Greg, Greg the actor, the one who played Mubin. Who played Mm -hmm. Mubin, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, And then we we shot the stuff set. um, I thought you guys had a beautiful chemistry, the two of you. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. plays it up. and, And I really enjoyed those scenes. And then... And it, it really helped bring weight to that whole storyline in Meridian, yeah. making sure that, you know, they, they were really that dangerous. Um, and you see that too when um, the lady who plays Rowena says to you in front of the mirror, which I thought was a great scene, as you yeah. own, you know, yeah. as you realise bringing Meridian back into people's lives is, is a very dangerous thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, you have, do you have a favourite scene, Matt? I'll tell you one scene that I really enjoyed watching was when I catch up to you at the end of Berlin, at the end of Five. I love, I love that it. scene. So do I. Yeah. yeah. I, watched I thought it was great, yeah. yeah. I mean, not because of me, because of you. I no. absolutely adore yeah. Cal. No, 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 but, I'm but both of them. no, 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 like 